We are going to be talking about countries today. And if you go to Wikipedia to read about Germany, for instance, you'll see that it's officially called the Federal Republic of Germany. The same happens with the official name of just about every other country. Then, if you check out the article on the presidency of Argentina, you'll see the official name of the position is the President of the Argentine Nation. Cool. But if you read up Japan, it merely says State of Japan. But we may also label California as a state, yet California and Japan do not share the same status. I mean, there's a Japanese passport, but you can't get a Californian passport because it's never been a thing. So what's the difference between a country, a republic, a state, nation, and other denominations to label politically divided territories and groups of people? Well, I made this video to answer this very question. So let's start with the term nation. According to Google, it is a large body of people united by common descent, history, culture, or language inhabiting a particular country or territory. And what does that mean exactly? Well, we can see that the description has a keyword, people. So a nation is a vast amount of people who are strongly bonded in some particular way. The establishment of a government or a recognized territory is not a must here. A good example is the Arab world. The Arabs are a group of 423 million people who share culture, language, and collective aspirations that keep them united. However, they're spread out around at least 22 countries that have different laws and ways to govern. You can live in one of the Arab countries or even get the citizenship if it's possible. But if you don't identify with the Arab culture or speak the language, you won't be part of the Arab nation. On the other hand, we can consider the Kurdish people as a nation because they do share the same ethnicity and identity, even though they don't have an officially recognized territory. Another interesting example is the Quebecois people of Canada. The Canadian House of Commons recognized them as a nation living in a province within Canada in 2006. They share a language, political ideas, and social backgrounds, but all of these aspects are not the same as the rest of Canada. Quebec City, the capital of the Quebec province, has the official denomination of Capital Nationale as a way to claim the statehood of Quebec. Corsica in France, the Afrikaners in South Africa, the people in the Falkland Islands, or the indigenous groups in the United States and South America are other examples of nations who are not sovereign states or countries. So after understanding the meaning of the term nation, we must now ask, can a nation be a state at the same time? The short answer is yes, but let's define the concept of state first. A nation or territory considered as an organized political community under one government. Okay, in the beginning this seems very self-explanatory, but before we continue, it is also essential to add that the terms country and state are often used interchangeably depending on the context. So following that definition, in order to have a state, you need to have a nation or a territory within internationally recognized boundaries, permanent residence, and recognition from other states and full sovereignty. So following that definition, in order to have a state, you need a nation or a territory within internationally recognized boundaries, permanent residence, and recognition from other states and full sovereignty. A state is administered by a political organization, often called a government, that develops an economic activity that regulates domestic and foreign trade, an education system, law enforcement, and more. The state is shaped by four elements, population, otherwise known as the people living there, territory, the physical space of land where people live, government, the entity that regulates everything and everyone within the territory, and finally, sovereignty, the full right of the government body over itself. So countries like India, Australia, Brazil, or any of the permanent members of the United Nations are states, but a state does not need to represent a specific nation all the time. For example, Iceland is a nation because most of the people share the same identity and cultural background. Moreover, they live within a territory ruled by one government recognized by the states around the world. So in this case, the country equals one nation. The same is true for Japan as well. In these cases, it is common to use the term nation-state. But you can find a nation spread around a lot of countries, like the Arab case we mentioned earlier, or a country with multiple nations, like Belgium, with the Flemish people speaking Dutch, and Wallonia with the French speakers, besides the little community of German speakers who reside there. A nation is a result of spontaneous evolution. A country is politically created. A nation uses cultural, historical, or religious links to preserve its integrity. Meanwhile, a country uses law enforcement and political actions to keep a sense of unity, and it depends directly on its sovereignty. 
The elements to build a nation are in constant change, and the components to create a state will remain the same. However, some entities do not have most of the qualities of a sovereign state. For various reasons, its independence is only partial, and they're controlled by other states, or they're just not recognized. The range of examples is broad and diverse, with different levels of autonomy. The Bermudas, Falkland Islands, and the rest of the 14 overseas territories owned by the United Kingdom, all of them have their own government. But the UK takes charge in their defense and foreign relations. The same is true for the relationship between Greenland and Denmark, Hong Kong and China, as well as Puerto Rico and the 50 states of the United States. And finally, 159 of the 206 self-denominated sovereign states in the world use the term republic as part of their official name. Let's check the definition first. A state in which supreme power is held by the people and their elected representatives, and which has an elected or nominated president rather than a monarch. So a republic is basically a government system in which the people shape the government by electing their representatives and the head of state. All of this with a constitution that serves as a reference for the laws that need to be created. Not all republics are democratic either. There are the cases of Cuba, Russia, China, and North Korea that don't implement all the traits of a democracy, such as free speech, or the illegality of any political party that is not the party of the government. Let's make this difference crystal clear. A republic is a type of government, whereas a democracy is an ideology that helps shape a republic form of government. Democracy is a more abstract set of ideas, whereas a republic is more concrete. Also, not all countries are republics. There are well-known cases of other forms of government, such as monarchies or partial republics. Today, all republics are countries. The only exception to this would be the countries that shaped Yugoslavia. Each of those republics had their own constitution, governments, minister of foreign affairs, and more. Yet all of them were on the federal government of Yugoslavia that upheld collective objectives and laws. All the concepts covered in this video can change depending on who you ask. And, as is the nature of geopolitics, they are continuously evolving, so we'll have to wait and see what surprises are coming in the future. Do you think we can have new ways of forming political territories in the future? Leave us a comment about it. That's all for this video. I know it's a complex topic, but I hope everything is now a bit more clear for you. Please subscribe and push that bell button if you hadn't done that before. That's all for now. Stay fresh.